My exploration of knitting therapy took me from Bath to Bishopsgate in search of two very interesting women. Uh, I'm Bethan Corfield and I'm founder of Stitch Links. Um, and I've been researching the meditative, creative and social benefits of knitting since 2005. But that's with the aim of introducing therapeutic knitting into mainstream health care. And people literally fell over backwards laughing when we initially said we were researching knitting. Uh, uh, so to get my foot in the door, I had to initially had to call it a bilateral rhythmic psychosocial interaction. <laughs> my name is Judith Sagan. Uh, I'm the owner of a company called Monster Yarns, which has been running now for a year. It's, uh, the company is actually a retail shop. It's run online at the moment, selling yarn. And as the other side of the business, which is where I think the fun of it lies, is I teach um, both knitting and crochet. And I've I've taught children. I've taught. Um, adults, old people actually with, with mental health problems. First, I asked Betson why therapeutic knitting was important. Well, knit, knitting therapy or therapeutic knitting is important cause, because it's accessible, it's low cost, it can be done, it's portable and that's really important, it can be done anytime, anywhere, so it puts the person in control of uh, it gives them a tool really to give them back control of, of some of the symptoms of how they feel. Mm -hmm. So, and it's a completely new, innovative approach to to healthcare. Really, looking at the other things that are happening in other, in people's lives, because as part of the research, what's emerged is that um, what's important in whether people recover or or how they manage health problems are the other things going on in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so, and, and knitting can help us deal with that. Uh, so quiet knitting on your own or knitting in a group can give you support. And both both have different benefits. Okay. So it's quite important to combine both. It's very important that um, we, 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 as, we as humans, um, each, each person doesn't deny the fact that there is some creativity that they need. I asked Judith to tell me the story about how and why she started knitting. It began when she was made redundant. For the first time ever I was a stay-at-home mum, for the first time ever I was unemployed. It was really frustrating. Um, I wasn't very patient and I just felt I was useless, frankly. I wasn't really needed at work, I wasn't needed at home. I, I, I was in a bad state. So. Um, I don't know, it, I, it, it just came from one minute to the next. It was quite inexplicable. I needed to make something with my hands. I needed to be able to point it and say, that's what I've made, this is what I produced today. Betson's research identified a number of issues that can affect our mental health and wellbeing. They might help start to explain Judith's urge to knit. There are five themes that come up in the narratives and those are um, isolation and loneliness. Mm -hmm low self-esteem, low confidence, feeling of worthlessness in society or maybe even in, even in their own families. Mm -hmm. There's fear, worry, stress, that's another, mm -hmm. that's another one. Um, low low self-esteem um, and lack of rewarding occupation was, okay. was quite important. Plus having a change of identity in some way. So if some people had an enforced change of identity, like maybe okay. through an illness, uh, so those so those are the sort of issues that cropped up time and time again. And if people weren't dealing with those issues, then um, they tended uh, not to manage life life's problems um, as well. And those are core issues that are found um, are uh, common across the board. Mm -hmm. They're common for you know in young people who are out to work, in retired people who are out to work. Uh, people are real, uh, so it, it, it happens across the board, uh, and, and many of us, you know, will encounter one or more of those at any stage. But it's how we ma how we deal with those, and whether actually we are active in dealing or proactive in dealing with those that matters. I asked Betson what it was about knitting that made it so helpful. As far as knitting is concerned, you have the movements which are really interesting because they're they're two handed. They're cross-body, 
and they're a coordinated pattern of movements. Um, but they're also rhythmic and repetitive and automatic and all those different um, factors are quite important. If you do um, a cross-body coordinated pattern of movements that you're looking at, it takes up a lot of brain capacity. Um, and uh, your brain um, has limited capacity to can only, um, it can actually only focus really on one thing at a time. So if you take up a lot of capacity with a particular task, then it has less left to concentrate on other factors like you know problems or pain for example so it's a slightly more effective distractant if you're using um, with two hands cross body i hate housework with a vengeance i actually get quite short tempered uh, sunday afternoons are the, you don't want to see me in a sunday afternoon i really am a witch um i find that when well, i've done that and then i sit down and i do a bit of knitting and it just sort of brings me back into an equilibrium. <laughs> I'm less of a witch. <laughs> there are animal studies being done um, showing that repetitive movement enhances release of serotonin. Uh, and if you think about it, uh, we tend to, to sort of tap or walk if we're very stressed, so perhaps we're sort of self-soothing. Um, I think the rhythm of those movements is more important than the repetitive... Well, it's, it's just as important as the repetitive nature, though, because knitters control the rhythm of the movement according to the mood they're in um, and the rhythm is instantaneously soothing and relaxing uh, so and there, there you know there's quite a lot of, lot of literature around rhythm being soothing and relaxing people rocking to you know after trauma and again perhaps they're, they're self-soothing. Most of the stories we've received have mentioned the, the rhythmic nature of the movements as facilitating a meditative like state and um, this is described it using, med well, they, they, they say it's like meditation, it's like prayer, it's zoning out, it's going into sanctuary of a peaceful mind. I don't have a specifically creative role. Um, I, mean, I, I, work, I work in finance, so it, it's pretty sort of statistical and analytical, and you know, there are no grey areas. Mm -hmm. um, but here, I had, um, I had the control. I could say, well, here is a pattern. I actually don't want to knit it like that. I want to knit it like this, or I want to use different yarn or a different colour, or I want to finish it. I want to have a short sleeve jumper, not a long sleeve jumper. I had control over it, and I could make it my own and make it unique. Um, unique is not something you do in finance. So what else can knitting do? Over 81% of people with, with clinical depression who responded to the survey felt happier after knitting. 54% uh, of people with clinical depression felt happy or very happy after knitting. And only 1% remained feeling sad. Um, usually I have a, an inc a, a, a childish sense of achievement and pride of, oh, look! <laughs> And I've got to quickly take photos and send it around to friends saying, look, this is what um, I do. We have lots of stories because you, you, you have your hands at about this sort of level when you're knitting and what that does is increases your personal space. Uh, and it form, people say it forms like a barrier between you and, and uh, the rest of the world. So it stops the rest of the world encroaching too close to you. So people who suffer from anxiety and panic or stress use it to enable them to socialise. It's, it helps them in a group situation, it helps them on public transport. There are quite a few knitters who wouldn't be able to use public transport without their knitting because they use this, their hands in front of them like this as a way of keeping themselves safe in that situation. So on a fortnightly basis I run a knitting group, but it's, it's free and it's open to all and people come and you have a wide range of people coming to that and that's your sort of standard knitters, those who want to learn. So you have a wide age range of sort of 20s, I in fact I have a nine year old coming, the um, 20s right through to, to, to women who've been knitting forever and a day and, and they just like the, the sociable aspect of it. There, are, there aren't many activities that you can have eye contact with. When, when you're actually performing um, the, the activity. 
but you could also choose to knit and sit quietly in a group if you want to. So if you're feeling particularly vulnerable, you can actually sit and knit quietly. So you, it puts you in complete control of how much you participate um, in the group. And also people describe it as giving their mind a break, mm. uh, particularly people who suffer from anxiety or thoughts that, that are continually, continuously whirring around in their minds. Um, it's a way of breaking into those thought patterns. Again, those sort of rumination and, you know, sort of backward thinking, negative loops of, um, of thinking are in your subconscious and are very difficult to break once they, once they get established. But perhaps it's the automatic nature of knitting that's doing that because automatic movement is in your subconscious too. People can um, forget what it feels like to be relaxed because if, if you're stressed or, or anxious for a long period of time, then you, your muscles, it'll be reflected in your muscles, they will be tense, um, your jaw might be clenched, your posture might be poor. So your brain, your brain gets to, your brain sort of recognises this as being normal for you and you can forget what it feels like to be truly relaxed. So what knitting, what I encourage people to do when they knit is to actually get into the flow of the movements and try and remember what it feels like when they're knitting. Um, and that can help them to feel like what it is to be relaxed again, because it's very difficult to get somebody to be relaxed if they've forgotten what it feels like to be relaxed. Yes. So if you give uh, them an activity like knitting that enables them to feel relaxed, get them to remember that, then we can get them to try and recall that feeling, even when they haven't got their knitting um, at hand. I asked Betson whether knitting can help us manage our well-being day to day. You can use knitting for your own well-being, whether you're fit and well or whether you suffer from a long-term medical condition, because it's, it's, we all suffer from ongoing stress, and stress, if we don't manage stress on a daily basis, it will build and it will give us health problems. So we can all use a daily dose of knitting to help with our well-being in terms of managing stress. But it also can help with um, issues like sleep problems, particularly if you find that you've got um, thoughts whirring around your head, stopping you going to sleep, uh, or you may be somebody who wakes, you know, three o'clock in the morning and get angry because you can't go back to sleep. Um, and in that situation, I would recommend you having a small kit by your bedside. Um, and it's one of the things you can do quietly in bed to relax you again, um, help you with um, stress of work because you can use it on your commute to work you can use it um, lunchtime it's one of the findings from the um, survey was that pe people who worked at a computer all day found it particularly useful to go back and do some form of craft or knitting at the end of the day because you went away from a, a two a sort of 2d um, activity to a 3D fun constructive activity and that was good and I found that uh, relaxing. I have been known uh, whilst I'm on a conference call at work and it's uh, you're on the phone so you're sitting at your desk you're on the phone the people scattered around the world that you're, you're, you're talking to and there is a lot of conversations there's background noise I actually found that getting my knitting out and I'm not talking about doing a complicated pattern but just a straightforward somewhere you don't have to just think about it and just knit I can focus better. You can use it for problem solving because there's quite a lot of research on the fact that if you're if you're mulling over a problem um, and then you go away and leave it and your brain relaxes the problem will come to mind. You can use it to find friends. Joining a knitting group will help you to find friends um, in a safe environment and it's a good opportunity to meet people from a lot of different backgrounds, uh, people that you would normally have um, the opportunity to meet. I think through knitting I've met people um, who I wouldn't have met, um, who I wouldn't have come across in any other form of other environment. The 
the survey that we did found that the more frequently people were knitted, the happier and calmer they felt. Finally, I asked Betson how we can motivate ourselves to get started knitting for well-being. The motivation factor is a big pro is a big issue, and it's actually probably one of the biggest problems um, healthcare systems have. Is to is to actually help people to be get motivated to become proactive in their own um, healthcare. Um, what we've what we've found is that um, taking small achievable steps. So going back again to this rewarding occupation, I mean, you've, got a, you've got a system in your brain called the reward system. And when you carry out a task uh, that requires a little bit of effort and you're successful at that task, your brain will fire off this, your feel-good chemicals. So ideally what you need to do is set yourself um, a, a small task that you know you're going to be successful at but that requires a little bit of effort. Um, and then when you, when you have that boost of feel-good chemicals, it's that boost then motivates you to go on to do a little bit more. That, that's what we found we can do with knitting. So I would, I, you know, I would say to people, go and find something that you can be successful at and do it and then build on that and experience that sort of natural boost of feel-good ke chemicals. I, I like starting something, I that, that feeling when I break um, the band and a yarn is still really exciting like oh I'm doing this oh I can't take it back to the shop <laughs> it's quite exciting as far as getting started with knitting um, I would recommend you you use four millimeter needles and double knitting yarn um, our research has looked at a little bit about color and texture and the ideal combination would be a soft texture and your favorite color but we did find that texture was twice as significant as colour for raising mood, for affecting your mood. Um, because texture, uh, the tactile experience seems to translate into an emotional response. So if you feel something nice, then uh, you feel good. And actually that can be a way, if you don't particularly feel like knitting, that can be a way of motivating yourself, buy yourself some really nice luxurious yarn and just stroking it or winding it into a ball and that tactile information going through your hands can make you feel good. So for people um, who are just beginning, I would actually, if you can possibly get somebody to cast on about 30 stitches for you, because the casting on process is a little bit more complicated, um, and people, uh, the person who runs the knitting shop, you buy your yarn, will be quite happy to do that for you. And then just learn the knit stitch. And there's uh, lots and lots of videos on YouTube for learning casting on and, and the knit stitch. But the main aim of therapeutic knitting is to get your mind into the flow of the movement. So you get your mind working in harmony with your hands. So you learn the knit stitch. And I would, um, and I always say, um, in, round, through and on with, and, and get people to actually try and um, think about those words as they're doing it so that's almost like a sort of mantra while they're learning it and that helps with actually remembering what to do uh, but it also helps getting their mind into the flow of the movements so once you're in the flow of the movements and you're enjoying the knit stitch you can then learn the purl stitch uh, and I wouldn't bother with um, knitting with a pattern even initially, just getting your mind into those flow of the movements. You can knit a long rectangle, you can knit squares, squares can be sewn into lots of, of, of things, you can make a blanket and then when you're confident with that you can learn different structures of knit stitch um, and um, learn then to, uh, to use a pattern. So there's lots you can do before you know you get into sort of actually knitting a complicated pattern so you you can uh, get the it's it is going back to those small steps of reward um, and making sure that you will be successful at it really